fictional story of a man who spent most of his adult life in jail. But this year, he's had a bit of a career change. He swapped South London for the South of England because he hopes that might finally keep him out of trouble. Noel Smith's a busy man. He works as a sub-editor for a Hampshire magazine. He's planning to get married and things are good in his life. But he's better known as hard man Razor Smith, armed robber and one of Britain's most wanted. He spent 30 of his 49 years behind bars. Last summer, he was freed. Just being released, it's a bit of a relief really, to be honest with you. I'm glad to be out of the place. Unlike before, Razor, or Noel as he now prefers to be called, plans to go straight. The main hurdle for me is going back into a life that I, I never really had because when I was out on previous occasions, I was always a professional criminal. So I was kind of uh, under the radar, if you like. I never carried ID, never had a driving license, never had, never worked and used my own name, never had a passport. And now I've got to get back into all them things. And, and I think it's the minutiae of that, the, the detail of it, of doing all those things. I mean, don't forget this is all new to me because whenever I've been getting out in the past, I've been going back to crime. This time I'm not, and it's a bit of a daunting prospect, but I won't be coming back to jail, that's for certain. Life can only get better. The probation service has insisted that Noel should initially live in South London, where he grew up, and that will mean moving back with his mum. When he was very young, he always wanted going to be a priest. I don't know what went wrong. I really don't. I wish I did. If I'd known, I'd have stopped it. I think I'm pretty much a horrible person, really. Um, even with my family sometimes. And I think I'm too old to sort of, sort of change that, really. I don't know. He never showed his emotions. Little things like his brother and sister would come in and hug us and say goodnight. You know, when they were going to bed, Noel would just stand at the door and say, I'm going to bed, right? I think there was always something very sad there. I'm arrogant sometimes. I'm uh, dismissive of people. I can be very, very rude. I'm unreliable. <laughs> I only discovered all that since I've been in therapy. That doesn't sound like a good advert for me, does it? Good job I'm not trying to sell myself. Noel learned to read and write while in prison. He since had four books published and spends much of his day writing his fifth. He keeps himself to himself a lot. Just doing his writing, he doesn't want any of that now. He's a completely changed man. But life in his old stomping ground has already brought up some familiar temptations. If I was going back to crime, I'd already be back in it. I mean, you can't come back to these streets and not know within a couple of hours, you know, what's going on. I mean, I've been approached once since I got out already asking if I was going back to crime, nothing specific, but asking if I was willing to go back, and I said no. And why should he, when what's on offer outside prison is so much better than what he was used to? Being able to have an ice cream on a hot day, you know, you can't get ice cream in jail. And proper fruit as well. In the jail, fruit is an orange, and that's it. But you've got to expect that from a place that classes spaghetti hoops as a vegetable. So, yeah, there's loads of things that I'm... All of a sudden, it's like I'm tasting them for the first time. Noel's family has helped organise a party to celebrate his release. It's an open invitation, which could spell trouble. Yeah, there's a few people I wouldn't want to turn up, yeah. Um, mainly my old enemies, but, I mean, on this scene, my enemies are, like, 30 years old. You know, it's so long since I've had any rows on this scene, but and I think if they turn up and they want to continue a row from 1983 or something, it's sad people. It's time to ask the DJ for a special request. Can you do me one favour in your life? What? That is a real favour for yourself what? and me. What? Will you stay out this time? I'm staying out, mate, that's it. If you knew him before, he went in prison before and the time before that, he'd be like, Whoa. bang, you know what I mean, that sort of thing. He, He's like a changed character completely. I think he's absolutely wicked, but he's paid his dues, he's come out an educated man. Now, his life's going to actually start beginning, you know, because everybody's there for him. The most important support has been his girlfriend of three years. The one thing I like about Tracy is she's realistic. She kind of like, if you explain things to her, she's a very clever woman, and she realises how I am. I suppose you could say I'm in love with her. 
as much as I could ever be in love with anybody, you know? Tracy was a Southampton student who was looking into the penal system. She wrote to Noel while he was in prison, having read his book on rehabilitation, and they just clicked. I admired him for what he'd achieved um, from where he started off, what he'd been through, for, for what he'd done, um, the crimes that he'd committed and that, and the fact that he'd managed to turn himself around. I mean, I think that took a lot, so I do admire him for, for that. I think for me, really, it was love at first sight. But I wasn't sort of ready for it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Three months after his release, Noel has moved to Fareham in Hampshire to be near Tracy, and they plan to marry. But life with a reformed tough guy has its problems. He's got this thing about weapons, didn't you? You had to have something to hand, yeah. and the door had to be locked, and it had to be double locked, and you know, it was just a complete and utter nightmare, and I just couldn't get my head round why he had to be like that. And you can understand why I didn't understand, yeah. did you? Yeah. So yeah, apart from the fact that we had to sit with a hammer by the bed, we don't do it anymore, do you? No. Do you? Is no. it under the pillow? No, it's not. Tell me the truth. It's not. <laughs> Noel thinks writing could be the key to getting away from his violent past. He says putting what's in his head onto paper helps. For me, when I started writing, it was like self-administered therapy. But it just seemed like a good way to take out my frustration and um, close matters down, if you like. I could move on after that. Soon after moving south, Noel Razor Smith landed his perfect job, writing for the Hampshire-based prison magazine that first discovered his writing talent. In most jobs, my criminal record and the fact that I've been in prison for a long time would be uh, a mark against me. But here, the, it's an asset. That's the piece he's doing, is it, yeah? That's the piece he's going to do, yeah, so it's about evidence. We're at such an unusual sort of organisation uh, that somebody with Noel's uh, colourful background is, is a big plus. Um, he's got all the knowledge and experience that we need um, because not all of us have actually been to prison. I love the work and I love coming to work and it's also, it serves as a reminder to me because I, I read the letters every day and, and the letters come from people who are in jail and sometimes I look at letters and I think that was me five years ago. And the move to rural Hampshire has other rewards. Yeah, I love it down here. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's a big contrast to South London. You know, people actually smile at you when you walk up the street down here. They smile at you in South London is because they're sizing you up to rob you. You know, compared to where I've come from, this is great. Noel hopes that moving south will help his struggle, but admits it's not easy laying Razor to rest. I don't really know where I'll be a, a year from now. Hopefully still in the same place and still working. That's me, my names. But one thing I do know is I won't be back in prison. I don't, uh, I've no intention of going back to crime, no. I've had me time at crime and it was no good and uh, it's behind me now.